Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make the invisible title card. I just finished watching the series a few days ago and I didn't see any other tutorials out there, so here's what mine looks like. The first thing you want to do is open a new Photoshop 1920 by 1080 composition. And then what I did was I looked for a grungy wall, and this is for the background, so copy, paste, and expand it a little bit to make it fill the whole screen. That was control T to transform it. And then what I did next was I took a screenshot of an invincible and you don't have to do this. I'll just, I'm just doing this to get the color. And so here it is. Do you want to copy that? And what I did was hide this Make a new layer, G for paint bucket, and just paste the color on. And then down here in the adjust, uh, in the blending mode, I chose multiply. And then I made the wall around 35% opacity, I think. I'll leave this the link to this wall in the description, but you can always look for your own if you don't like how this looks. Next thing you want to do is take your text tool out, and I use I with for the eyedropper to select this yellow and then you have to download this font called woodblock cg it's free i'll leave a link in the description and this is what you make your main text with it. and so i picked the word cucumber because it had around the right number of letters to fill up the whole thing and by pressing control i can make it bigger and it doesn't really matter what size you make it but it just has to kind of fill a good portion of the screen and so if you reference the original title text, it might help you a little bit. And once you're happy with that, you want to right click here and click rasterize type. This makes it editable like an image. So now I'm going to edit, transform, and warp. And so what I'm doing now is kind of stretching it out so that it looks more like the title. And just follow the steps that I'm doing. The sides should be going out and but still straight by themselves and then the middle should kind of dip in next thing to do is to make the text below and so the font i used here was roboto regular and i don't think it's the exact font that they use but it's pretty close and so uh, you can do my research if you want i made the top text 45 and the bottom 69 that's the size um, so just type that in uh, select this one, make it 69, and the spacing is kind of weird, so I'm just going to select auto if that's an option, yep. And then here you just want to type maybe something similar to what uh, they had. So in the real title, it's based on the comic book, I'll just say based, based on the vegetable, by, and here they had names, I'm just going to write, you know, farmers retailers ampersand sure something like that and you just want to adjust it until it looks kind of like this it should be smaller if you look at the original and move it a little bit with control and that looks pretty good to me uh, I think the background's showing a little bit too much so decrease it just a tiny bit And from here, what you want to do is move the screenshot. It's not important. And you want to group, uh, get rid of the background. And you want to group the big text and the small text together. So select them both with shift, right click, and merge, merge layers. And you want the, the background two to be together too. And you'll see why in a second. You're going to want to save this as a PSD um, and then head into After Effects. In After Effects, you're going to want to import the PSD that you just made. So uh, for me, that's this one. And in this dialog, you want to click Choose Layer and then choose the two layers that you merge. So that one's the text and this one should be, uh, this one should be the background. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. 
Next, you want to make a composition and 1920 by 1080, 60 FPS or whatever you want and make the length about five seconds or four seconds. That's uh, pretty much the length of the title card. Okay. And what you want to do is drag the background on, uh, make it the length of the clip. I had shift there so that it would snap and then put the text on top. All right. And extend that too. Um, the text needs to grow. Obviously that's how the title works. So if you click on the layer, press S for scale and set keyframes. The first one, put it at the start and make it 86. And the, the, the last one or the other one, I put at around three seconds and made my 95 here. And what you want to do is select these two keyframes, right click them, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And what this does is uh, instead of going linearly from uh, one value to the other, it kind of goes faster in the middle, which is something that I think the creators also did. Right here, you can see it's not really as centered as I would have liked. So the good thing about this is that you can go back to Photoshop and just kind of center it more and save it. And this will change too. So thanks Adobe. Uh, next thing I want to do is duplicate this two times. And I'm just going to name these so it's more clear for your, you. Uh, the first one is the main. This one is going to be called bottom text and the last one is red so main uh, we want to mask out the bottom text and it's fine if it's not perfect um, as you can see that makes it only the bottom text which is not what I want so I click inverted on that mask and now it's just the top text for the bottom text layer, you want to kind of do the opposite. So uh, copy this mask, paste it onto this layer, and then undo the inverted. And then what you want to do is keyframe this layer because the, uh, the bottom text isn't there at the start. So um, maybe around here somewhere, you make it zero, and then a little bit later, Make it a hundred. And now we have, we also copy this mask to red. Um, make that one inverted. Then now it fades in nicely. Okay. Uh, now red is going to be red because uh, this is going to be the layer for the blood spatter. So what I did here was I took a tint added it on uh, in the tint effect settings of the red layer I changed this to be that color so for black and white so that it just overall becomes that color and for now we're just gonna hide that layer this is actually a bit smaller than the one I made before so I'm just gonna go to the last keyframe and make it 110 instead I think that looks better just looking at this, uh, transition looks kind of slow, so I'm actually going to make a change. I'm going to select just two of these keyframes, click Graph Editor, click the arc, and then drag these handles towards the middle. And so this makes the transition even faster. And then what I'm going to do is copy and paste these onto the other two layers. Make sure you're at the, the first keyframe. Uh, paste there, paste there. This should have a bigger, a faster transition. Uh, I think that was like, yeah, I like that better. The next thing you want to do is the blood spatters. So what I did was I downloaded the supercut of all the Invincible title cards. You can just find it easily on YouTube and I'm going to import it here. And what you want to do is double click it and look for the blood spatter that you want. So. For example, I kind of just like this first one here. So I'm going to put a endpoint there. 
and around when it starts to fade, I'm going to put an out point. And then I'm going to drag that onto my footage. And so what we want is just the spatter. And so I borrowed an idea from an image processing project I did and decided, hey, I wonder if this program has threshold, and it does. So what threshold does is every uh, thing in your picture that's above a certain threshold is black, everything below is white. So by dragging this down a little bit, I can just isolate the blood spatter. And uh, we want to get rid of this white background, so change the blending mode to I think darken. Yeah, okay. So now we have a blood spatter and it doesn't quite match as you can see and so we're gonna make changes to fix that um, but before that something you should do is right click this and do time remapping and go to the start and add a keyframe uh, copy this value go back here add a new keyframe and paste that value and so what I'm doing here is extending the clip uh, so that it fits and obviously nothing changes before the start of the clip that you took out and after as well. So same thing here, copy, make a keyframe, go to the end, uh, make a keyframe here, and then extend this all day out here. So you see from here to here nothing changes. It looks a little bit off and that's because um, they're kind of being scaled at different rates. So what I'm going to do is drag this back over here a little bit. Uh, kind of want the blood spatter to be near the end of the scaling. So let's see here. And that looks pretty good. Uh, uh, it keeps scaling a little bit here, which you, I don't want. So. What I'm going to do is drag this keyframe back here to the point where it stops. And yeah, now they both stop moving together. I think the original actually keeps growing a little bit, but um, not a big issue if you ask me. And you can work on that if you want. Uh, and so the last thing you need is to make the parts that are covered in blood on the title red. And the way you do that is once you're happy with this, um, once you're happy with this blood spatter layer, you control D, duplicate, and you want to drag the red layer up a little bit to be below your duplicate. Haha, <laughs> duplicate. Uh, and then set the track mat. Uh, if you don't see this, you can click one of these to open it. Set the track mat to be Luma inverted. Um, and so if you show that layer, you'll see that the parts that are covered in blood are actually actually red. If you play this back and turn off the audio, just a tip. Yeah, uh, if you play this back, you'll notice it, the yellow over here kind of grows too much at the end compared to the black. And so um, again, just select these two keyframes and we want more of the transition to happen near the beginning. So I'll just drag this back a little bit and copy that again and paste these keyframes for the cucumber layers and I think this will look a little bit better. Yeah, so that grows kind of together now. The last thing to do really is add a fade out at the end and you could do that here in After Effects just by uh, you know nesting this composition and then doing that but I prefer just to do it in Premiere Pro. If you're making this title card, it's probably part of another project. So keyframe near the end, that's 100, and then zero at the end. And then it'll fade up. And that's pretty much it. So if you found this guide helpful, then make sure you subscribe and check out one of these other videos.